All right, so part two of the multi-blind parody, I don't know, tutorial? I don't know if you want to call it a tutorial or whatever. Deep dive, let's call it a deep dive. Multi-blind parody deep dive. Uh, this video is going to be centered around something I call weak swap. This is basically a method that I developed jointly with my friend Kevin Matthews. Could be that somebody else came up with this before me. Maybe, I mean, probably somebody did, but like, I haven't heard anybody talk about it. Um, it's a fairly obscure kind of uh, method, I guess. Um, but that's what I'm going to be talking about here. And if you don't have any idea what I'm talking about, we're going to get to it very soon. But I need to start with uh, some buildup. All right, so the way that we arrived at this method, weak swap, starts at the initial more obvious idea that when you use the methods I explained at the end of the last video, basically UF UFR buffers with the UF UR swap, uh, and solving edge parity targets with just appending that edge parity target to UR. You may quickly realize that whenever you have a cycle break while tracing edges first in multi-blind, if you always cycle break to UR, you're going to save yourself an alg and a word to memorize a small amount of times, a small amount of cases per attempt, but it is going to save you a non-zero amount of time. Um, because occasionally you will get one cycle break, exactly one cycle break while tracing on a cube that has parity. And you, even though you didn't know that you have parity while you're automatically cycle breaking right there, you will end up automatically doing that UF UR swap, which you would have done with three blind parity knowing that you had corner parity. So I'll show a quick example of that didn't make sense as a bit of a long winded uh, explanation. All right, so I'm going to, uh, Scramble in my orientation, you should do the same. I'll put the scramble right here, right now. All right, so go to your orientation. I know this is very tempting to do CFOP with, but uh, just resist. Um, so I'm just going to trace through this and it's going to have one cycle break just to illustrate that it's going to save an ALG. I'm gonna trace first with the method where we automatically cycle break to UR. And then I'll show that if you don't do that, it gives you one extra algorithm or word, uh, I mean, and word. Uh, so basically we start here and then we trace to there, to there. That's first pair, one word. And then we go there to there. That's second pair, second word. And since this is my buffer, I'm going to automatically cycle break it right there. Um, and so that would go to there. That's the third word. And then we go there to there to there. That's the fourth word. And then that goes to there to there. That's the fifth word. And now we've landed exactly on the piece that belongs right there. And we've also solved, we've traced every edge uh, on the cube. And so that indicates that we have parity and we've already done this UFUR swap. So that's five. Uh, letter pairs or five algs and we immediately know that we have edge or that we have a corner parity and We don't have any edge parity target meaning we've saved ourselves one algorithm uh, And I'll prove that to you by tracing without that automatic breaking right there and we'll get one we'll get six uh, algs or uh, 11 edge targets instead of ten so here to here to here. That's one letter pair there to there, that's two letter pairs. And then instead, let's just break to right there. Uh, that goes to there, that's three letter pairs. And then there to there, four letter pairs. There to there, five letter pairs. And then we've got this as an edge parity target. So our last uh, alg would have to be there to there to there to uh, solve parity and do this UFUR swap. And so that was 11 targets. You would basically have to use six words if you're doing multi-blind instead of five, which we had before while automatically breaking right there. And uh, just a quick note about how helpful this is. It's fairly insignificant to be honest, but you might as well do it because it requires like zero effort. This saves you an alg and word in um, edges on 8.9% of parity scrambles. So for a 25 cube attempt, that's going to be roughly one scramble or one alg or word saved per attempt. 
for a 50 cube attempt, it scales linearly, it's going to be two scrambles, so also two algs or words uh, saved per attempt. Obviously the more cubes you do, the more helpful it is, but I mean you spend less time per word or alg when you're doing more cubes, so eh, it's about the same actually. Alright, so there's a pretty simple way to develop on this and give yourself roughly double the amount of algs and words saved. You literally just have to, instead of always breaking precisely to UR when you need to cycle break, you just pseudo-solve your buffer to UR. So basically that means solving to UR when you hit the yellow sticker and solving to RU when you hit the blue or the uh, the orange sticker of your buffer in or whatever whatever the front face color is, given your orientation. For me, it's the orange sticker of my buffer. Um, so basically, pseudo-solve your buffer to the URRU location instead of just always breaking to UR. So all right, just a quick example. Um, scramble right here again, scramble in your orientation. All of these examples, you should scramble in your orientation, by the way. All right, so I'll just start tracing, and I'll show you that if you don't actually pseudo-solve your piece, right, your, your buffer piece right there, then you're gonna have to end up doing a UFUR flip at the end, which is an extra alg and word uh, that you have to memorize compared to uh, with this pseudo-solving method. So tracing, we'd go here to there to there. That's one alg or word. Uh, then there to there to there, that's second alg or word. And then there to there to there, that's the third alg or word. And then this is my buffer, but we haven't landed on the uh, solved part of our buffer. We have to put it right there um, in order to pseudo solve it right there. And so that would be there to there to there. That's the fourth alg or word. And then we've got there to there to there. And now we have traced all of the edges um, on the cube and we've landed on the correct side of the, uh, the pseudo solved piece. Um, or like the swapped edge, you could call it. And so that's five algs or words total. And we can compare to what uh, we would get if we instead just broke to our U or UR instead of solving the piece there. Uh, so we'd go there to there, that's one alg or word. And then there to there, two, there to there, three. And then we break to there, to there, four, there to there, five. And so I'll just show you really quick what that gives you. Second alg, third alg, fourth alg. Um, and so now we end up with this UFUR flip because we didn't pseudo solve this piece right here. If we did, it would have just, everything would have been solved. So we've got that extra two flip alg to do. Just that simple little uh, extra technique of pseudo solving instead of just breaking to UR will save you that two flip alg in uh, eight, about 8% 8 more of cases compared to what we were doing before. So this little development saves you, uh, guarantees that you will have an alg saved on 16% of parity scrambles total instead of the 8.9% that we had before, uh, to be exact, 16.64% of parity scrambles. So that's roughly two algs or words saved on a 25 cube attempt and four algs or words saved on a 50 cube attempt. and Four algs or words is pretty significant. That's like uh, almost half of a cube's worth of algs and words. So it starts becoming like non-trivial at this point using these methods. All right, so the next development after this is going to be weak swap. Uh, it's a fairly simple case of weak swap. I'm actually gonna show you the exact uh, kind of case that made me realize this method. I more so uh, found this method just for one simple case of it. And then I showed it to my friend Kevin Matthews and he pointed out that it can be actually applied in general and uh, used to, to save yourself an alg or word on a lot more cubes than I realized. Uh, like on a lot more parity scrambles in multi-blind, I should say. Scramble your orientation again, scramble right here. All right. So keeping in mind the uh, pseudo solving your, uh, your buffer to UR or RU uh, when you reach your buffer before the actual UR or RU piece. Um, and so we start tracing, we've got here to there and there's our buffer. So we're gonna pseudo solve it right there. 
And then we've got there to there to there, second word, there to there to there, third word, to there to there, fourth word, and then there. And that's going to have to go right there because we haven't solved these two yet. And so with everything that we currently know, we would have to go from there to there, and that would be our fifth word. And then we would have, uh, I don't know, just say right there for the uh, next um, cycle. So there to there, that'd be the sixth word, and then we would have this as a parity target. And so seven algs or words total. And now the idea that I noticed just like in the middle of multi-blind attempts, I started using this just because it was fairly simple to apply. Um, basically when I've reached this target, it was fairly easy at this point to look ahead when you just have a two swap of pieces left, like right here. I just would note like, oh, instead of solving this piece to right here, like I should when I don't know that I have parity, if I just look ahead a tiny little bit, knowing that this is this is going to end on the second target of a letter pair, and I look ahead and know that I have a two swap left, then that indicates that I will have parity. So I can just go like, oh yeah, I can just, uh, instead of solving this right there and then doing what I showed before there to there to there and having a parity target, I can just uh, shoot this anywhere on this two cycle, and then um, I'll end up with one less ALG, and I'll have effectively done the UFUR swap. Instead, when I get right there, I'm just gonna do like whatever the fastest column is, so that would be there to there, and then the second uh, cycle would be there to there. And so that's six words or ALGs total instead of seven, which we had before. So, show you that first ALG. Second alg, third alg, fourth alg, fifth alg, sixth alg. And without even knowing if we had parity before starting uh, memorizing edges, we've done the UFUR swap and saved ourselves one alg. And so I showed this one basic case of when you have like a, a floating two swap uh, left when you hit the piece that belongs right there. So this piece that belongs right there. Um, and I showed him that like, oh yeah, you can save an alg sometimes when this happens. And he was like, wait, you can apply this concept in general, um, even when there's not just a floating two swap left and you will never add your, you will never give yourself an alg extra relative to not doing this. And the basic algorithm for applying this, what we are now calling weak swap is this. So you hit your buffer piece before you hit the URRU piece and you pseudo solve it to right here. So that's basically like the build up what we did earlier in this video. And after that, continue tracing like normal. If you hit the URRU piece before you finish tracing all edges, continue on as if that's your buffer. Basically you're assuming that you have parity even though you don't know whether or not you actually have parity. Um, in the cases where you actually end up having no parity, you'll end up with a parity target and in this case, you'll just append it to UR, same as you would have for a parity target on cases where you have parity and you weren't doing weak swap. If you do end up with a no parity target, that means you do have parity and you effectively just did the UFUR swap like you would have done in three blind uh, with corner edge memo, edge corner execution. And this will save you an alg or a word on uh, 49, 0.62% of parity scrambles. So that's much more significant than what we had before. Uh, basically, that's going to be 6.2 algs or words saved on a 25 cube attempt, so more than half of a cube, and 12.4 algs or words saved on a 50 cube attempt. So more than an entire cubes worth of execution and memorization, which is fairly significant at that point. 